first year just Elliot Ohm. But the inspiration for the I don't have a resume, like I learned all my talent on mm. YouTube or whatever it said, is that did that spawn out of like no one taking you serious because you were like I haven't learned like design school or whatever? Oh yeah, it's it's all real. Every, everything, every single thing I post comes purely from like an honest, my honest experience of the industry. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today, my guest is a very special one, the funniest graphic designer on Instagram, maybe even the world. And uh, he's a really cool guy, uh, hence his Instagram is Elliot's a cool guy. So it's Elliot Ohm, right? It is Ohm. Okay. The, uh, I don't know, it changes depending on which accent you have. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. It's Austrian. You don't know if you're pronouncing it? I've got no idea. I've got no idea. I guess it's if it's your name, you can really say it however you want, right? Exactly, exactly. So um, where are you from, actually? Australia? I know you're from, like, somewhere over there. So I'm, yeah, I'm the east coast of Australia, Sydney. Um, And, yeah, born and raised. Born and raised. Really? Um, One thing I was going to, I actually was wondering is because I've been probably following you for Seems like, I don't know if I have the numbers wrong or your growth was just insane, but I think I followed you like two years ago and you had like 3,000 followers. I don't know if that's that right. That was only but... one year ago. Oh, that one was year one year ago. ago. That was that was less than a year. That was like, yeah, I hit 3K just before New Year's, like a day before New Year's. And you're like, what, 85,000? Um, yeah, something like that. It's, it's been pretty <laughs> quick, pretty, pretty fast. It's pretty overwhelming, but yeah, it, I got... The algorithm algorithm struck my luck this year. Yeah, I, I feel like um, one thing that uh, if you guys haven't checked out this guy's work, um, it's like very resharable. You know, everyone's always sharing your posts because every designer and creatives, I feel like it's very relatable. So it's mm. something that you have a unique style. You know, it's coming from you. And like you always think of the super clever taglines and they're always like very cheeky. And, um, but one thing I noticed, like, I think one of your early on posts, you have like a theater background, right? That's what you started with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a theater kid at heart. So how did, uh, what happened with the design world? How did you kind of transition to that? So, yeah, I, I think, um, it was year eight of high school. So what, when I was like 14 that I started performing, um, and I just really liked the, I was doing a lot of improv, like improv was the main thing that kind of got me into performing. Um, and just like being able to make people laugh. I, I absolutely love that. Yeah. Um, and then in year nine, the year after I started learning how to design just in a few classes. Um, like I was lucky enough to have, you know, like a computer lab in my visual arts class and we did like and a week on school. Photoshop. That was high school, yeah. Well, it's different for America, I think. Like, year nine, I think middle school. I think first year middle school or something. Um, year but, nine, yeah, like, that was pretty yeah. young. First I was, year like, 15, I think, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Cool. Um, and, yeah, we did, like, a Photoshop class, and I was learning, teaching... They were teaching us Photoshop, and then I kind of just went home, got the Photoshop free trial, did all the classic stuff, started just making like cool retro vintage wallpapers that I would find off YouTube tutorials. And I just loved it. And then, yeah, I kept going for a while and I didn't really find any kind of traction until like the, the page is the main thing that kicked off to my career. Like I didn't have a career before this. And what I like about the pages is it kind of combines my love for comedy and my love for design together. It was like combining those two natures and then it's kind of become what it is now. But yeah, theater has helped in like a million ways. Like being able to stream on Twitch takes, you know, a bit of self-confidence and a bit of like a lot of performance is required in yeah, it definitely. as well. And being an improviser means that whatever someone says in the chat, I can make a joke out of it. And I love that constant thing. And I think that's why I've kind of never really gotten into YouTube either because I like how quick it is. I like being able to just make a show on the spot rather than, editing or anything and i also just hate editing yeah Uh, so yeah i i get that and i i feel like um because i'm the opposite i'm trying to get more into streaming and i've mostly been doing videos and i feel Mm. like it's hard to put the required time into both of them and make them actually good because i'll just be like i'm streaming at a random time you know and what do i expect out of that you know Yeah, yeah but um i think your 
theater background is definitely apparent in like your streams and also like coming up with like the clever design things because when I was in your stream um, last night or the other night, um, you are like really quick with it, you know? I feel like a lot of streamers, if they're not doing something super engaging or interesting, they have a hard time just like chatting or just being there like with the yeah. crowd. But it seems like you really got that stuff um, kind of handled. So if you were doing a theater and all that, and then you kind of, it started kicking off with the page and everything. So did you kind of just say like, all right, this is, this is what I'm going to do now. Now it's my full-time thing. Well, I was, I had like a few auditions lined up just before um, COVID kind of hit Australia. And this is when I was like at 10 K followers. Like, I didn't really expect it to blow up, blow up like, like it has. I kind of just thought it would be a, a fun thing and I'd get a couple of gigs out of it to kind of sustain whatever else I was doing. Um, and acting is still very much the the plan A. That's what I love to do the most. And and as much as I, I, I do love design, but I feel like with, if I didn't have the Twitch stream, um, I'd get pretty bored of it pretty quickly. Like having the performance aspect to it helps a lot. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, COVID shut down theater, shut down performance, any kind of acting you did, unless you were like a big dog who had like TV shows looking to film right. in COVID, then there were no opportunities in Australia. Um, so it, this was kind of like a good way to pass the time and it turned into something else entirely, which is now my like full-time career that is yeah. like fully sustainable now, which is amazing. But um, it still very much is there and I definitely want to keep at it. Um, but I find that like th I had this weird thing where it's like if I'm either if I'm just designing and no acting or if I'm just acting and no designing, I'll get bored of either one. But yeah. if I'm doing both and like jumping between each, I'm like in a perfect state. So that's ideally where I'll be in the future, which is cool. Yeah. And the stream is definitely a perfect balance of those yeah. two things. Um, when you first started out, did you have, cause you've all like the style that you, you have been doing on Instagram and what has gotten you like this notoriety and things, were you doing any other things before that? I know the timeline's kind of short, so it's not like mm. you kind of started designing and then you, it seems like you found that niche like very quickly. And, um, were you doing anything before that or posting anything like prior? It was, it was literally my second post where I realized that like, the comedy graphic design is like the perfect kind of place to go. Cause I did, um, I made the decision to change my personal page to a design page. So I don't even have a personal page. Like I, I'd like to think they're one and the same now. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I told everyone I'm going to start posting my work, just like try and support it, whatever. And I posted a, um, a poster I made for a friend's comedy show uh, and I got like a hundred likes and I was like, oh, sick. Okay. hundred likes. Here we go. We're cooking with gas here. Let's do mm -hmm. it. And then, you know, two weeks later, back when I didn't have any schedule at all, I was just kind of like designing whatever. I made the the business cards that kind of like have summed yeah. up my page. That that I don't have a degree. degree. Yeah. All that. yeah. Best one, my favorite ones. My fa Still my favorite post I've ever made. Um, and I made that. And that blew up. Like that nearly got a thousand likes in two days. And that was and your second that was post. Someone, that was my second post. Right? Like just like all the maybe, hashtags. How many followers up. do you think you had? Like the time? 400. 400. Yeah, that's great. And then. the funny thing is I gained like 10. Really? I, I didn't <laughs> gain it. many at all. Wow. Because if you looked at my page when you found that post, it was a personal Instagram page. Like I hadn't mm -hmm. deleted any of the last photos. So people just assumed that I wouldn't post stuff like that. I think it was like a one-off thing. So kind of like a, you know, one too soon in a way, but it got reposted by like Fruits Art Club and Collect Graphics reposted. All these big pages started reposting it. And Were then you already I, aware like, of those kind of pages and things? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. at the start of like, because this was posted in like April, but at the start of last year, I, I realized that there, there was like a design side to Instagram. I had no idea beforehand. Um, and I found Harry Vincent, um, brilliant yeah, he's UK dope. designer. He's so good. Uh, and I was like, he blew up really quickly at the end of 2018, I think. Um, no, it would have been the end of last year, but at the start of last year, he kind of was getting a bit of momentum. And I noticed that and I was like, oh, cool. So there is, there is a way to grow. Like right now you can grow on Instagram if you're a designer. I should just start posting with a black background, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, 
And then, yeah, I did the, the, the business cards. They got reposted. One of my goals of the page was to get reposted by Fruit Cycle Club and it happened in my second post, which was <laughs> yeah. absurd. So, you set the bar um, high for yourself. Right oh, there. honestly, I really did. Uh, and then, yeah, from there, I just kept doing... I did a few comedy things and then as the engagement for those kind of dropped because the quality wasn't as good as it was at that... Like, I could never reach that same first post quality. Like, yeah, that was so... Yeah. Which was always hard. And I struggled for like a year trying to reach that kind of level of, of post. Um, and I changed around. Like, I did... I was redesigning musical theatre posters for a little bit, trying that. Um, I think i was considering just making some like fake client work in a funny way and all this stuff but then i just kept gravitating back to comedy like what's mm-hmm. the the design meme designed well is kind of like the yeah, slogan that is really like a good way to put it because i've mm-hmm. considered um making things like that that i know will be shareable just to be like for something funny but then i realize mm-hmm. like i don't just want that on my page though after that you know if it's not done yeah, well yeah, yeah. I don't just want that white yeah. border with the black text with like the guy looking back at the girl or whatever, you know, yeah. something like that. Totally. But you've done it well and I, you've actually changed it a little bit. You didn't always do like the little business card kind of template, right? Yeah. It was more poster. Yeah. It was, I, I did a whole range. Like I was going uh, kind of like Harry Vincent who jumped around between like little sticker designs to like burnt paper to notebooks, kind of like a whole bunch of His page was like really red for a while, right? Like, yeah, that yeah. was his thing. He would use the his bio said, "I guess I like red," mm. and then every single post had the same red somewhere in it. And I did that with yellow, the the mustard okay, yellow yeah. that yeah, like part of my brand, whatever. Um, that was like something that I was trying to. I, I, I would say I copied it. I took inspiration of it. Mm. Um, but I was doing a whole bunch of different stuff. Like I did bookmarks at one point. Like just all these random templates that I thought were cool. Yeah, and then I. The business card, the first business card I did blew up and I really enjoyed making it. Uh, And then I was like, I'm just going to do more of this. And then it kind of just was like four business cards and one poster. And then Mm -hmm. like six business cards and one poster. And then I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to do business cards. Um, So I just kept posting business cards and it kept working. And I think just the restraining yourself to like the one type of layout makes you really good at that layout. Yeah, Um, definitely. it's really interesting now when I go to posters, I really struggle. Like I just haven't done posters in so long. You're only filling up the little portion of the poster. Yeah, like, legit. It's like, like cram as much as possible into this rectangle. And then you get a poster, which is like three rectangles stacked on top of each other. Mm-hmm. And I'm lost. Like I, just, I don't even know. It's so weird. I just kind of like take what I would have put at the top and at the bottom and just space them all the way out and just leave a whole bunch of negative space yeah. in the middle. And Was call the it a inspiration day. for... Uh, the whole like beginning of this Elliot's like a cool, I think that's when you became the cool guy, you know, first you were just Elliot Ohm, but the inspiration for the, I don't have a resume. Like I learned all my talent on Mm. YouTube or whatever it said. Is that, did that spawn out of like no one taking you serious because you were like, I haven't learned like design school or whatever. Oh yeah. It's, it's all real. Like I, I applied for, the a one year like interim graphic design job at my old high school th- who I had done graphic design work for yeah. before. Right. I applied for a job and you know, did the resume cover letter. And I thought I was at least going to get an interview because they didn't even want your portfolio until the interview. Right. So oh, this really? was just like resume and, and cover letter. And I didn't even get an interview. And I was like, this is, I've literally worked for you before. Like I've done work that has inspired your graphic designer. Like your graphic designer has copied my work That's to funny. like fit the brand. And I can't even get an interview here. Um, so yeah, I just, every, everything, every single thing I post comes purely from like an honest, my honest experience of the industry, my very limited and, you know, three years long experience, mm-hmm. but you learn a lot very quickly about what people expect out of a graphic designer. I think um, that's why it works though. I don't think you would have been able to mm. fake like that He'll, yeah. like kind of brutal honesty with like sarcasm. It would have been, mm. I feel like I wouldn't know how to explain how you would know, but you would know, you know, you'd be able yeah, to yeah. just kind of see that. Oh, I've heard someone say that before. That's not his actual story or his yeah. truth or whatever. 
And I've I've considered going to like design school just because <laughs> like even at the end of last year, I was considering like, you know, it's a new year, 2020, I should just do a degree, like get things sorted. And I, I knew a few designers who had had that design school experience and it looked like it was a lot of fun. And then I thought, once you go, like once you go to design school, Elliot, the joke's dead. Like that's no longer your brand anymore. You ha- <laughs> you cannot use like that branding. Like you can't be funny anymore. Like that's what makes you you. So I've kind of just yeah been so against it to keep the brand alive. And yeah, it, that's funny. It's, it's kind of like how it. how yeah. people will um you know part of their brand something that's bad for them so they can't really fix it like oh they're like a party like alcoholic like person or yeah. or they're like really like overweight or something it's part of their brand and everyone loves it so it's like yeah they want to maybe not do those things as much but how yeah. will that affect like how the world knows them and everything mm. but i don't know i i don't really think you have to go i mean you're better than a lot of designers I know that went to design school. So look, I don't know how to use Illustrator. Uh, there's a lot of programs I got no idea how to use. Um, I've, I'm a very unconventional designer, but I mean, when has a client specifically come up to me and being like, "Hey, can you make this on Illustrator?" You know, like they don't know the difference between something made in Photoshop and something made in Illustrator. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of just yeah. It, it's it's completely fine with me just doing what I'm doing and not worrying about the technical things because. I mean, YouTube is everything these days anyway. If I really did need to learn something, like there's a tutorial for it. So, yeah, I don't want to go anymore. But <laughs> it, I decided. think it, it'd be fun to meet people and like be like present with other people and discussing design. Like my favorite parts of the stream, like we had a great chat about it yesterday. We just had a huge chat about, you know, the Instagram design trends and kind of like the future of graphic design on Instagram. Um, but I was just talking to, you know, messages and chat. Right. So having that face-to-face discussion with people who have been around the industry for ages would be good, but yeah, I'm fine That's with it. it though. Like you really yeah. hit it. I, um, I learned, I already went into uh, college or like design school, or whatever is a normal university, but um, knowing illustrator and things like you were saying, like from some high school classes and things like that, like my high school teacher would make me like trace the Batman logo with the pen tool to like learn how to do like yeah. the curves and everything. So it took till like year two for me to feel um, like I was learning new things. They're just teaching you all this basic shit that a lot of people had already known, I felt. And the only part I feel like that benefited the most was the interaction, the critiques and like meeting the people and just getting the perspective on like that you can bring into your own work, you know, because if you're just doing by yourself, sometimes you get like you can't, it's harder to check yourself than have someone else be like, oh, you should try this or whatever. It's a lot yeah. easier when you have a community like that. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously one of my questions I have here, it's funny reading it now because you pretty much answered it a couple of times. It was, uh, you d- didn't expect to gain the popularity that you had when you started posting, right? You didn't think it was going to yeah. become this big old brand or anything. Like, I I mean, I had a stretch goal of 100K and I was kind of like, if des- I, my whole thing was like, if designer's humor, the Instagram page designer's humor can hit 700,000 followers, then I can at least steal 100,000 of them. Yeah. Like, with essentially the same stuff, but just like designed well and with more a more, tasteful. more tasteful, better content, uh, newer, original content, mm-hmm. you know, the things that designer humor doesn't post. Um, so, I tried to aim for that like in i don't know three years or something it just it there was something that happened in may that the page got like 20k in one month because i made i just struck gold like i hit four posts in a row and all of them i've reposted before because they all did so well like Mm -hmm. it killed that four days um and all instagram relies on it's something that, that i've learned is momentum like if you can get some sort of momentum no matter what you post after that momentum you're still going to keep growing for a while yeah. like you've got a solid month of like you know making content and it, all, all it needs is one of those posts in that month to blow up and yeah. you've got another month like once you have that uh, momentum you, it doesn't stop um and I took a break like after um, at May, uh, at, at the start of June, um, in Soda with like the Black Lives, Black Lives Matter movement, right? Because right. that was kind of start of June and, you know, posting design memes made no sense at all at that time. Right. Um, 
and you kind of like that that momentum dropped and everything but it like it picks back up like that's the thing with instagram it kind of like you just gotta the, the good content brings people back um which is cool and that but also yeah, was, might have not been like the best sh- like someone that is less um what's the word like empathetic or whatever might not think that that's a good like short-term strategy like don't stop what you're doing because of what's going on but like if you care like that's great and that you were um, sensitive enough to know that it didn't make sense and it's probably even better in the long term because people see that you're not just out here like always having to grab for attention when things that are bigger are going on you know that's the thing. It's like it's so much bigger than literally uh, the amount of followers, like a, a number that doesn't mean anything to anyone, mm-hmm. right? So it's just like just the, the pushing through for the sake of growth and momentum made no sense at all. Like you got to kind of step back and go, this is bigger than me. This is so much bigger than anything going on in the design community. Um, this needs to rest for now, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just all came out of no. I think that it was it was a year ago. I just got a notification saying that if I don't update this face filter in thirty days, they'll delete it, which is sad. Oh, um, what but I made font the, one? What fun are you? That was it. That was the one. And that was like when I talk about momentum, like that was that was the start. For real. I got like two thousand in a week because everyone just used it. I was looking at the stats yesterday after I got this notification. And like a million people shared it to their story. Like a million, it was shared a million times. I saw people using it that for sure didn't know who you were on my friends list that aren't even designers. They're just like, well, I got comics heads. Like, this is great. Because it was, it was, I I struck, I I was like, it was, I think it was New Year's, New Year's Eve last year, the day before. Um, that I'd seen the like what Disney character are you what animal are you all this stuff going around mm-hmm. but there was only a few at that point like now it's so saturated with stuff it's ridiculous. so specific too oh. it's ridiculous oh, exactly um, and I saw those and I was like okay I have a free day today this is the goal if I can literally make a face filter today and publish this it'll get approved in two days and imagine everyone else is making one at the same time so if I get this out first that'll be good Mm -hmm. and i taught myself bloody spark ar in six hours it's terrible (laughs) oh my god i had no idea what i was doing thankfully someone made a youtube tutorial i think within those six hours so i did a last minute check hour five and i found a video on how to do it it was in a different language sure but you could kind of follow along um and i did it and i uploaded it and then the next day it gets approved just on new year's eve and I could already see as soon as I use it once, everyone starts using it. It just, it just jumped. Like that was the mm-hmm. trend at the point. And yeah, 2000 followers in like a week. And I reckon I'm still losing followers from that 2000. Like those people are still going like, why did I follow this? Oh, he's the what fonty. And then they yeah. just like unfollow. Um, but yeah, that was kind of like, that started a, a solid few months of just steady, steady growth, which is really yeah. cool. So, uh, How, uh, speaking of like, we were talking about how, you know, you've transitioned into this, uh, field and you had clients, not clients don't care. They're not going to say, they're not even going to know if you make a logo for them in Photoshop really, unless they ask for like a AI or SVG or something, but, but, uh, how was it working? Like, were you approached by uh, Casetify? How was that? Yes. So I think that was in, uh, May. They sent me a message, their head of design um, messaged me on Instagram, just got a message request being like, hey, I work for Casetify, would you be interested in collaborating with us? And I mean, I sent a message to Casetify in February that just read, I have, uh, like, people have been saying we should collaborate or something dumb like that, just like a silly message to try and get their yeah. attention. And they didn't reply or anything. So I was like, oh my God, it's actually happening. Um, and yeah, they just, like, they approached me in may and then it took a solid few months to kind of get it up and running um and i've 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 never like i've been so lucky with the clients that i've got this year it's it's, the most like trustworthy genuine people who who just kind of want to support me and my work like case i pretty much said just make some designs we'll see how they go i send four through and and they're like we we love these these are great and that was kind of it and I was like oh holy shit that's no revisions it. like no revisions no revisions <laughs> or anything they're like can you make some more and I'm like oh cool I was like those are just drafts by the way and then they're like yeah cool 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 and then I made some more made another three or so and then I was like okay these are the final ones I'm really happy with these and they go awesome 
well, can you also upload the the drafts that you made? Can we use those too? And I was like, oh, oh yeah, sure. So the seven that I had up for a while were mainly drafts and they were just so fine with them. And that collage one that I made was originally a draft. That was kind of like the, I mean, it's literally a collage of my work. Mood board like almost of like what you yeah. wanted to do. Exactly. It was, it was meant for me. Um, I was like, okay, this one I want to buy. Like I don't, the other ones, that those, cause they're made to order. So I knew that like one, one case that didn't do as well as the others wouldn't matter too much. Oh, that's so how I kind of made that one. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, which is good because it means that, you know, the environmental awareness from Casify is good. Um, but it also means that the prices go up a little bit. So, people complain about the price, but it's like they are made to order. Right. They don't just buy, which is great. Um, but yeah, the, um, the collage one was literally, I just wanted it, right? I was like, I want a case by case with my yeah. work on it. That one has sold better than all the others like 10 times over. It's really? absurd. I think just because the well surface area, goes. you know, people like the oh, like stickers all over their phone type of look. Yeah. And, and it was funny because they told me they were like, oh, the best selling ones are like the kind of sticker collages, but it's not all over. Like you can still see it looks like you've literally stuck stickers on the back of your phone mm. kind of design, like without with some parts being transparent. Um, and I did the opposite of that. I just filled in the whole thing and yeah, it did so well. So yeah, that, they, they, they've been lovely. They keep pushing the case, which is great. Um, and yeah, they're just love, great, great people. Big, big love to case. Uh, yeah. So when you guys, when you work with them, um, I know you're saying it's made to order. So did they just pay you, uh, some kind of fee up front to design for them? Or are you on like a percentage, you know, if the, I don't know if you can answer yeah. any of that, but. I think I can just say that I'm, it's royalties because I don't oh. think I've signed anything or anything. I'm pretty sure I haven't signed it. We never did an NDA. Because that's anything. dope. That's like, to me, that's the better investment of like, if you could ever get royalties on anything, that's like amazing, honestly, because you never know oh, how much you can blow up. 100%. Yeah. It, it, at first, I was a bit worried about it. And then they were like, we will literally pay for ads. Like we will run ads through your channel like through your page so you'll get followers from it as well because people are going to be seeing your ad mm -hmm. um and i was like okay if you're gonna if you're gonna do that then i'm in 100 percent. like i don't have to do anything and that's so, been the case the last four months i've just it's, it's the definition of passive income it's the designer's dream right yeah. any entrepreneur freelance person's dream yeah so yeah been very blessed with case they've and they do a lot of cool shit here. like i always see like a lot of brands is uh, like collabs look kind of forced, but I feel like yeah. they found a good balance in like how they choose it, how they apply. They don't just put the logo on the case, you know, yeah. it's creative. And they, the way they work with artists, especially recently, I've been a huge fan of because I was one of the first one. I think I was the first of this like new artist collection that they kind of did. Um, and they've released like 12 other collaborations since then. And I've had people message me, designers that I admire, messaging me being like, hey, Case 5 just messaged me, like, what was your experience with them? And I'm like, oh, this is sick. They're like, they're in the Instagram community. Like they yeah. are well and truly scouting. That's where that they're design finding community. it and everything. Yeah. And they're getting people not just to do collaborations, but to like do a bit of freelance work for them as well. Um, and it's kind of like, I've noticed there's like two sides to it. You can either get the collaboration or you can get the um, the freelance side. Depending on who messages you, you get like a different kind of brief. But yeah, they, they're just like, they're awesome. And they're, the, the way they're supporting artists right now is really cool. Yeah, definitely. Have you been uh, since... I guess I'm sure you've probably like it's same with how you reached out to agencies, reached out to brands and things in the past, but with, with, um, the rise in the past year of, uh, your brand, have you mm -hmm. been getting like quite a few inquiries from like brands and things? Yeah, I've been getting um, a solid amount of client work, which is good. And I've had to turn down a lot, mainly because I was kind of, I mean, I only moved out like less than a month ago. Um, so when I was living at home and I mean, I made, I made the decision to move out like a week before I actually moved out. It was ridiculous how quick it all happened. Um, but yeah, I was kind of getting enough work to kind of just have like solid income coming in, which was nice. And I was turning down a lot mainly because I wanted to focus on the page and I was like, I can build the page up more. And I kind of think, think the, the goal for me was kind of to build the page up as much as possible. So if I were to sell like stickers or prints, mm. um, that the return on investment would be good. Right. And definitely. 
that's kind of what's ended up happening, which is nice. Because like, as if the page grows, if the Instagram page grows, the Twitch will grow. I'll get more phone case sales. I'll get more print sales. Like everything mm-hmm. else kind of grows along with it. So at the heart of my kind of thing is I got to keep coming back to the page. Like that's the, that's the core. Um, but yeah, I think um, I've kind of changed. Like I've, I'm now that I have this audience as well, you can kind of change the way you charge clients too. Like you can kind of include influencer rates because if you go, you know, I'm going to stream the process on my Twitch. I'm also going to post the final work on my page. Like I'm giving you exposure, I guess. And it's kind of like that. Your tables have turned, huh? The designer. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I'm charging exposure. It's amazing. Um, So yeah, it's cool how it works now. And um yeah, it's at, a, it's at a good little place. But I mean, I've never really loved client work. Like I won't take on a logo, for example. I'm not going to design someone's logo, mainly because I'm not good at it, right? I'm not good at logo design. I'm not good at um, editorial design or, or a lot of stuff like that. It just takes me way too long and I get very stressed out because I feel like I'm overcharging, even if I'm charging like a yeah. hundred bucks for a logo. I'm like, it's shit. They're going to hate it. I should have charged 20 bucks. Like this isn't good. Um but yeah, I, the clients that I'm getting now are very much like, hey, can you do a business card for us, for our brand? Like, can you yeah, do a joke that's for dope. us as well? Like, or like a promotional type thing, like a specific yeah. like marketing like the, tactic. The Linktree collaboration was like really yeah, five of my posts. Amazing. I, I, they are, they're an Aussie brand, which is really cool. Um, and the main guy who, who, who runs that social media page messaged me and he, he jumps on my bloody Twitch streams. Right, like he's he's an active Twitch streamer, um, yeah. viewer, um, and they just the, the the definition of trust. Once again, I sent through you know all of my designs a, a week after we agreed to it, and they just got back and they were like, "These are pretty much perfect." Like, here's a few suge- like ideas from us. If you want to take them on, go for it. But otherwise, like we completely understand, mm-hmm. and like their suggestions were brilliant. Like just for the wording of it all. And it was the really only wording notes. Like they only gave me notes on the wording. Just the copy um, pretty much. Yeah. And that was it. It was done just like that. And, and the easiest process, most streamlined process, they ended up, you know, giving free Linktree pro months to all my Twitch subs, which is huge as well. Oh, that's tight. Um, they've just been, yeah, super, super generous. And it, it's pretty much considered like I'd consider working with Linktree as a partnership more than like, it's same with case fights where I would say collaborators, partners in work rather than just clients, which is really cool. Yeah. I mean, I think it's dope that you've been able to not only work with the brands, it's not like, here's this, here's the deliverables, it's done. You've developed like, it really is like a, a collaboration a lot more than just they're hiring you, you know, because they're using Hmm. your, a lot of designers, if they don't have the platform that you have, it's not like they promote you and be like, this guy made it, you know, they usually want to pay. So they don't have to do that type of thing. So it's really cool that I think what you're doing, like, uh, it's ridiculous for anyone like a, cause I know I'm sure you've had like how you said, you don't know illustrator and things like all these old, like watchdogs being like, ah, this guy is just (laughs) a Photoshop kid. Like, but that's ridiculous and i think you should do something any way that it works for you and those people should be grateful if anything because i feel like you're opening up avenues for people to be able to do these things and not feel the pressure of like i have Mm. to go for like five years before i can even try to work with a brand or anything yeah and there are like huge discussions going on in in the community right now about like you know how adobe's price is so high that if you're if you just want to do design it's kind of like a side thing like learn design with another job like good luck because right. the price is ridiculous for it it's like 80 80 australian a month is absurd um and yeah it, it, it it's really cool now how people are saying like it doesn't matter what program you use like the mm-hmm. fact that the industry standard is a, is adobe is so unfortunate because it means it's so inaccessible for anyone who can't afford it um and I could have done all my posts in Canva for all I care. Like, if one would know yeah. the difference, right? Like, if, if, it, sure. if it, it turns out the same and if you master a program like that, that you can do anything you want with it, um, then no one will really know the difference. And You're scared of relearning all the hotkeys, you know? Oh, That's honestly, I, I, once you learn one, it's so... Even, even Illustrator, the subtle differences between Photoshop and Illustrator, like, the little things, like, even mm-hmm. just, like, you hold shift when you're transforming something and it yeah, will do a different thing Photoshop and Illustrator. Different. 
like what's up with that like then they updated photoshop to change that oh i don't know but yeah it's um it's funny how it all works and i i think it's really cool how these kind of newer programs with a much better price point are becoming more and more popular and yeah it's 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 good i'm, I'm excited to yeah. see where it all it ends seems up. like the best uh intruder of like taking down the um adobe monopoly has been procreate even though it's kind of a yes. it's not really a substitution because it's a lot more on the ipad and things but there's people that only use that you know and they get tons of work and they're respected designers illustrators all that and what people can actually like i've seen some i'm on procreate tiktok i think i've seen a lot of procreate videos on tiktok (laughs) recently and the things people can do with that program even i've just got no clue as to how you would even do it on photoshop um so yeah it's good it's very good and it's 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 good for the community which is exciting because i think for a while especially when i was just starting out you know i I didn't want to message any big designers being like hey how much should i charge for this logo i've got no idea what i'm doing um or like hey uh, is it okay if i don't know how to use illustrator like all this stuff um i didn't want to message anyone that so i think it's cool that more and more people are being more transparent about their process and more open with everything because there's no point in keeping how much you charge someone a secret yeah. like no one benefits from that like no one at all not even you like what, what's going to happen if you tell someone how much you charge for a logo like that person is going to go charge a different client that like you're not losing a client you're right. not losing it they're gonna get that um, if they don't want you based off price they don't really want you they want a designer yeah. you know exactly right and the more designers are open and the more transparent they are about their process, the means means the more confident young designers will get when interacting with these clients mm-hmm. and the clients are going to get used to it over time. And then the general pay for designers is going to go up. The right, quality of everyone's the scared and up. they're all these, I yeah. see a lot of younger designers. They're so scared that I see them commenting on like, you know, um, like it would be like rappers or like brands or even like musicians. And they'll say like, then they're good. Like it, it, they just don't have the confidence and they'll say like, I'll do your album art for $10. And I'm like, man, <laughs> like you could do it for more than that. Like, don't be, don't be like worried that they're going to yeah. turn you down or anything like that. It's self-worth. It's just mm-hmm. like your, your work is good. It's like, as, as we need it in, if we can make every designer feel, believe their work is good, then everything is going to be better for everyone. It's just, the the way that some designers get exploited by clients is just i mean i've had it happen to me before like same you know not mentioning how many revisions you're going to do and then you end up doing 20 for 50 bucks like Mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff these horrible interactions that make you want to stop designing right and that's why i started the page because i didn't like working for clients because i never had good experiences even working for friends i had horrible experiences sometimes that's like my Um, the worst i think with i know because i did i don't know how to like establish the boundary you know yeah Uh, they're my friend exactly just like the simple idea now like if a friend came up to me and was like hey could you do this for me i was like sure here's my contract so like Mm -hmm. the idea that my friend would have to sign a a a contract like and then trying to keep business personal relations separate like it's just all it's all tricky and it makes you it's very overwhelming and i was so overwhelmed when i started out like for a few years just had no idea what i was doing um and even now like i i I sent my first contract like the other month right like Mm -hmm. i didn't even have a contract for ages um case if i just slipped by without signing anything i was like sure i think this is going to turn out well like i didn't even consider any of that um but now I feel like I've got a much better grip on it just because like even just chatting to people on my Twitch stream, like they're so open about what they do. And, you know, there are so many big experienced people in my community and we've got this advice channel in our Discord and like the effort that people go to to give it like a solid response to someone's question is amazing. And it just like it brings me great joy yeah. to know that there are these places where young designers can ask anything and that someone with the the relevant experience is going to be able to help. Like that's a huge thing. Yeah. You're dis- um, the type house is what you're talking about, right? So yeah. I wanted to ask you about kind of the origin of that and like, just, mm-hmm. you can promote that, talk about it a little bit. And I, I agree with um, what you're saying. Like I'm in probably, well, my own and which is like, very low key so join the discord if you're listening to this and then i'm in a couple others maybe 10 the type house one definitely the most supportive people out of any of the ones i'm in it doesn't matter what you put even if you're just promoting something people will go and drop you a like or whatever or they'll give you advice and everyone's very there's not any of that 
like in some I'm in, um, there's like a pretentiousness to it, you know, and people yeah. get scared to post and the environment is like more toxic, you know? Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, it, the, the kind of motto that I've gone with for the type house is like, you know, if you want criticism, you go to design school. Yeah, if you want criticism, you ask for it. Like the, mm. the channels that give you criticism just, or like getting a, getting a comment on an Instagram post that criticizes your work. No one asks for that. Right. Like, I yeah. think it's very much, very important to set that standard. Like if you want criticism for your work, then you look for it and, yeah. and you're open to it. If you, if you're looking for it, that means you're open to it. It means you're going to take it well. Um, and the type house was all about, yeah, building up confidence essentially. Um, because that's kind of like, I'm, I'm a huge believer in, uh, design being completely subjective and what is good to you is not good to me. What is good to mm-hmm. me is not good to someone else. Right. Um, huge, huge believer in that. And I treat design with a very artistic approach. I say, if you want it to be art, it's art, whatever. My work is graphic design at heart, but it's art to me. So mm-hmm. it's art to everyone. That's it. That's what I consider it. Um, and my favorite designers, the reason why I think they're good is not because like they follow the rules or anything. I don't even know what the rules of design are, but like, or they, they structurally sound or whatever. It's, it's because they have so much confidence in their work that you believe it is good no matter what. Like you just go, this, this guy is just going for it. Like there is no holding back here. Everything is like, I've never seen anything like this before because it's just this confident experimentation and just like... I mean, when I design, I go, if I enjoy doing this, then as far as I'm concerned, that is good. Like if I'm having fun, then this is good design. Mm -hmm. And I can tell that other people do that because you can see it in their work. It's just fun, exciting stuff that goes against the grain and I love it. So that's what the type house is all about. Kind of like building that kind of- um, Supportive community. Yeah, that mindset in people. And- yeah, it's a it's a beautiful place. I love it there. It started off as what, like a Twitch companion Discord, mm-hmm. right? Just for people to chat about the stream. And now I feel more and more detached from it because it's just like it's it's become a design community and it's awesome. Um we've got an Instagram page that's run by like six or seven people. I'm not even I don't even know the password, right? Like it's just all this it's it's happening yeah. without me and I think that's really cool. Are they like some of your moderators and things? Yeah, I've, I think only one of our moderators on the Discord is in charge of that page. But like, you know, we, we did a secret Santa challenge and at 1 p.m. today, someone's going to get on and reveal all of them and announce it on a on a yeah. video chat. I'm like, that's the coolest thing. Like the effort that people are going into to build this community just because they love the community and they want the community to do well um, is very good. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I couldn't be happier with how it's turning out. It's like 700 people now or something. Nice. It's become too big almost but to manage <laughs> it's cool yeah honestly yeah. I, it's 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 very it can be very, managing anything can be very like whoa like this is yeah. this is full on i'm i'm the top top of this what do i do um but yeah it's the support it is just amazing love the support um you, you were saying uh there's a difference or what were you saying you were saying um about designers who are confident and it shows and I feel like what I, what I was thinking about when you said that is the rules are only the rules, but like they don't really matter because if you're designing something and breaking like these so-called rules, if you're doing it intentionally and with purpose, that's a different than breaking rules or whatever, because like you've never heard any of them and you're just like, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, people that some of the best people, they get criticized by like these old like designers. And I respect a lot of these old designers because they've done like some of the dopest shit, but it's like any, um, really anything in life. The past generation is always going to be kind of stuck in what they know and they won't accept it. Cause we're, we're probably going to, you know, kids in like 40 years designing on like some holographic tablet or something. Yeah. We're going to be like, you guys don't even remember Photoshop. Like this yeah. is like terrible. Mm. So I think it's just an age thing. If, if anything. Yeah. And it's, it's, but that's what I love about the type house as well. Like it's so young, it's very, very young and you can tell. So it's a whole bunch of people who are kind of just like seeing, being the, the next generation of design. I imagine like these are the people who will shape where it goes. And yeah, with the whole rule stuff, it's, it, it's like, I, I definitely appreciate the people who, the, 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 you know, the designers who kind of set the standard, who set all these trends up mm-hmm. and all these styles that have definitely inspired me and inspired the designers that I'm inspired by, right? Like 
it's all there and it's set a really good base level but like if you're stuck in that and you can't really if you have to say every design has to design like this then we get nowhere right people get right. bored of stuff um the amount of times i see a cafe that looks the exact same as the next cafe logo or a big business doing a rebrand to, that looks exactly the same as anything else um or they just or take the logo artwork, off <laughs> legit like they just get rid of the, any the fun of it yeah like yeah. they get rid of the fun of it um, and it becomes this kind of like corporate mess of just the same old, same out over and over and over again. Um, and then you like find that rare thing, like an album artwork that just looks completely different to anything that you've ever seen. And, or like a, a logo that comp- like is just taking so many risks and that's what gets the attention, right? That's what's selling right now. And it's sad to see how, you know, some clients don't want that and they just want to play it safe when in reality, like... I mean, no one was expecting a pandemic. Like, nothing is the same as what it was. Like, this is a time to be experimental, to take actual risks and to hire people with, like, passion and who want to take those risks with you. Uh, and, yeah, I just hope that that kind of... It's it's kind of starting now. Like, there's definitely more and more of it around. Um but I just hope it continues in the future. Um, no more, no more boring design. I say I've had enough. Of it. I see yeah. too much of it. Who, who are like uh, some? I ask a lot of my guests, like, who are some of your biggest? Who or what actually are some of your biggest inspirations? I mean, we could drop some of that in the description, or even if you want to send me some later, that'd be totally cool too. My uh, my number one like favorite designer ever kind of I, I discovered him earlier this year um brolio amato as a new york based designer i just bought a throw rug of his spent way too much money on it but i was like he will never release these again I, this is the only yeah. like i need to buy anything that he releases um he's, he's the definition of like confident work right he'll just go for it his illustration style is wacky it's all over the place but it just always ties together and you know this is someone who's been hired by like you know he does illustrations for the new york times and stuff like that like he'll do really professional good work um but he's just so unashamedly himself yeah um and he just exudes this brolio amato style and he won't change for anyone and i love that i absolutely love that um and then there's also this um this this designer duo um who've created a studio together um gabinet exquisito is the name and they're kind of like uh, Manico and Mai Tai Mai are the, the, the two Instagram handles. I don't actually know their, their names. <laughs> I only know everyone by Instagram handles these days. Yeah. Um, but they're kind of like illustrators slash artists um, slash, slash designers who just... I've, I've chatted with them a few times and they're just really cool people in general. Um, and their style is very similar. Like it's... I don't know if you've seen any of my kind of like... I call them Pringles. Like the shapes that I warp around and drag around. Mm, like that yeah. comes from... Brolio's like work and kind of shaded in edge and the rest is yeah. like a stroke i love all that stuff. Pringles. Right? yeah that's a good the Pringles, yeah. <laughs> i love that stuff um and that very much started from looking at their work and you know work that doesn't really focus too much on typography and is very much more about shapes symbols and colors um and i try and bring that and see what i can do with type as well um so yeah i think there's too many to name honestly yeah. i can't even think those are of, good uh, 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 i might ask you yeah. after for the actual spelling because it's yeah, interesting so. names for sure there's one more as well um on instagram studio um studio nari who is run by i believe um katarina bianchini i think that's her name i'm not sure um once again the bloody instagram handle is the main thing that i know um but her work is like definitely kind of it's just like full of that energy right like the energy is such a big thing that i've kind of been focusing more and more where i want to feel like the design is kind of like alive in some way like there's some sort of action happening it's not just a flat image like i mean i can't motion design so i want to kind of give off that sense in some way or another and kind of like make it feel like there's something like something there in the design rather than just words on a page um and yeah studio nari is like one of my probably my favorite design studio out there just sick work but yeah i'll send all those to you Check them in the- yeah i really like getting inspiration myself from people that really do yeah. stuff that i don't do at all because i don't <laughs> want to keep seeing similar things that i do because then it kind of oh, yeah. forces me into like an echo chamber of like just creating the same stuff so 
I'm not like a very strong illustrator, so I follow a lot of illustrators, a lot of people that do like animation and things like that because yeah. that way I can bring that into my work and it's it feels more even more inspired than when you're getting inspired from another graphic design like poster if you're making a poster, you know. Feels a yeah. little more uh I don't know, less like copying or whatever and more yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh this is cool, I'll think about that. No, for sure. But yeah, um I've been going 50 minutes i think that should be good but go. i really uh, appreciate everything and i wouldn't you to um plug anything you want to plug i mean you got what are all the ats you got the yeah the latest, uh, cool guy rundown. what have we got um obviously like yeah my everything's under elliot is a cool guy um that's two l's one t uh i've got my instagram page i stream on twitch for both us and europe and worldwide audiences my Discord is the Thai Pass, which you can find through the Twitch stream. H A U S, right? Yes. Um, so, phone cases through Casefy. Honestly, everything's in my link in bio on my Instagram page. All right. And you we'll know, throw that in the description. We got yeah. it. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching. And I really appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, it was nice to talk oh, this to is you. Great chat. These are some great, great questions. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Honored. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you.